Welcome to another video. In this video, we will continue learning maternity nursing starting with diabetes mellitus. There are two different types of diabetes. Pregestational and gestational. Pregestational diabetes mellitus is when the client has diabetes prior to pregnancy. Gestational diabetes mellitus is impaired tolerance to glucose with the first onset or recognition during pregnancy. The ideal blood glucose level during pregnancy is 70 to 110. Note that clients develop diabetes mellitus during pregnancy, usually in the second or third trimester. Now here are the contributing factors of diabetes. Obesity. Maternal age older than 35 years old. Family history of diabetes. Previous delivery of an infant who was large or stillborn. So what are the signs of diabetes? One of the important signs of diabetes is hypoglycemia where the client may present themselves as nervousness or may complain of a headache, weakness, irritability, hunger, or blurred vision. Another major sign is hyperglycemia such as thirst, nausea, abdominal pain, frequent urination, or flushed dry skin. Now let's discuss laboratory testing and diagnostic procedures for diabetes mellitus. Laboratory testing and diagnostic procedures include the following. A routine urinalysis with glycosuria. A glucose tolerance test. This test involves the use of a 50-gram oral glucose load, which is then followed by plasma glucose analysis one hour later. This test is performed at 24 to 28 weeks of gestation. Note that fasting is not necessary. A positive blood glucose screening is 140 or greater. A positive blood glucose will require an additional testing with a 3-hour glucose tolerance test. A 3-hour glucose tolerance test includes an overnight fast. It's important to teach the client that they must avoid the use of caffeine and smoking for a 12-hour period prior to testing. A fasting glucose is obtained with a 1, 2, and 3-hour following glucose ingestion. Other labs to help monitor and maintain diabetes are the following. Monitor hemoglobin A1c. Monitor for ketones. To prevent complications, also perform the following tests. Biophysical profile test to ascertain fetal well-being. An amniocentesis with alpha fetoprotein. A non-stress test to assess fetal well-being. Why is monitoring diabetes mellitus crucial to care? Here are the following risks to both the newborn and mother when there is an increase with poor glucose control. Congenital anomalies. Spontaneous abortions. Macrosomia, which lead to birth trauma and dystocia. Death. Hypoglycemia after birth. What are some of the important nursing actions we can perform that will help prevent complications? Interventions include educating the patient on diet, exercise, blood glucose monitoring, and the need of insulin if required. Next, let's go over medications for diabetes mellitus. Oral hypoglycemic such as gliburide is occasionally used for gestational diabetes. Gliburide is in a class of medications called sulfonylureas. Gliburide lowers blood sugar by causing the pancreas to produce insulin and helping the body use insulin efficiently. Depending on the patient, insulin may be required. Insulin needs will change each semester for example, insulin needs decrease during the first trimester. During the second and third trimester, due to an increase in hormones such as HCS, which is an insulin antagonist, Insulin needs increase during the second and third trimester due to an increase in hormones such as HCS, which is an insulin antagonist. That's it for Diabetes Mellitus Review. Next we are going to cover Hyperemesis Gravidarum. Hyperemesis Gravidarum is related to excessive nausea and or vomiting. Hospitalization may be necessary because of dehydration and weight loss. Begins first and second month of pregnancy. The main contributing factor are high levels of human chorionic gonadotropin and estrogen which leads to decreased gastric motility and gastroesophageal reflux. What are the manifestations of hyperemesis gravidarum? 
Manifestations include the following. Loss of 5% or more of pre-pregnancy body weight. Dehydration which causes ketosis and constipation. Nutritional deficiencies. Metabolic imbalances. As the nurse, you will want to assess for the following. The client's weight. Signs of dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, and metabolic alkalosis. Input and output. If the patient shows signs of dehydration, electrolyte imbalances, you may need to administer IV fluids. Medications used for hyperemesis gravidarum are the following. Antiemetics such as ondansetron. Vitamin B6. Note that no more than 100 mg daily used solo or in combination with doxylamine. Other therapeutic measures include acupressure and relaxation techniques. What are some important tips to give to the client who has hyperemesis gravidarum? Here are important client education points. Nausea and vomiting usually peak between 2 to 12 weeks of pregnancy and go away by the second half of pregnancy. Suggest to the client to eat small, frequent meals, eating dry foods such as crackers may help relieve uncomplicated nausea. Teach to increase fluid intake to prevent dehydration. Also teach to increase fluids during the times of the day when the client feels less nauseated, seltzer, ginger ale or other sparkling waters may be helpful. Well, that's it for this video. In the next video we will continue the lesson by learning about placental and cervical problems. Thanks for watching.